Good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Zach. And I'm Josh. And we're here together to present to you what should be a pretty awesome show. We have a video clip from Courtney Kay coming up. We have a look of the week to look at. And we have what should be, or at least has been, a very requested topic. Reviewing the different CAD cut materials that are available here at Stalls and what each one is used for benefits and disadvantages yep. as well. And we're broadcasting, I believe, for a third week in a row now on Facebook Live, so we welcome that audience as well as our normal uh, viewers through GoToWebinar. If you have questions uh, through the GoToWebinar client, go ahead and chat those in. Joe will direct those uh, to us towards the end of the episode. And if you're watching on Facebook Live, go ahead and just type your question. Uh, Courtney Kay is standing by to answer those throughout the episode. Um, before we get into this week's episode, last week, uh, the, all the morning shows are recorded and published on Stalls TV, so you can go back and watch this. But last week, uh, we featured six different brands, and you got to interview uh, different folks on Stalls TV and talk about sort of what apparel brand um, inspired us or we wanted to highlight to viewers and why. And I just had a follow-up question for you. What was your favorite uh, profile or brand uh, that was talked about? Uh, my favorite from last week, I. I think it was a combination of the brand and also the presentation was from Karen and it was picture this. Karen doesn't get on screen a lot, but she always does very well when she does. She's always well prepared and just really enjoyed kind of talking with her about the company that she was featuring. Picture this was a company doing all over sublimation on little girls uh, dresses where yeah. the child could color whatever they want on the dress, take a picture of it send it to the company, and they would print a custom dress and send it back to them. I yeah. enjoyed that one. And they also did the matching uh, American Girl doll dresses. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I went home, at you know, seven-year-old daughter and told my wife about the concept. We'll be printing some stuff out and placing an order. But I thought it was a pretty interesting uh, brand as well. I enjoyed that one. Um, and then, was there even a close runner-up in your mind? Not really. Okay. Not really. Head no, and shoulders. I, yeah, it was head and shoulders above. Um, I thought it was enough out of the box, enough niche marketing, um, enough creative idea was something that's been around for a long time with, with all over sublimation. Okay, excellent. Um, we're going to bring to you this week's look of the week now, which was submitted on Facebook. Stalls all things heat printing on our Facebook page. Let's share that with you right now. Drum roll, boom, there it is. There it is. <laughs> All right. This is from Tracy Lannon from Grand Lake, Louisiana. Uh, she uploaded this photo of their spirit store uh, sale items on Facebook. These were some items that I'm guessing were recently produced. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like some uh, football fan wear gear. Um, there for the spirit store. And we have all sorts of uh, technologies and products being used here. There's some embroidery. Uh, we can see it on the cheer shell in the bottom, perhaps, with rip-away applique. Mm -hmm. uh, that process, we have Premium Plus utilized here. We have fashion film, and we have glitter flake. Uh, all sorts of different items. Pretty uh, compelling package that you can make here. Yeah, it looks like a lot of high-profit items, too. We've, we've talked a lot about the uh, cheer bows and how much money somebody can make off of a cheer bow. Your cost to make, depending on what you're into, is five, seven dollars, something like that, and they can sell upwards of 45 to 55 dollars, depending on the size and the cheer squad that you're selling to. And I know you mentioned in rehearsal the uh, blankets yeah. are a very high profit item. Tell us a little bit about your experience with those. Yeah, and I love this because Sanmar has a very printable blanket, mm -hmm. a very heat printable blanket <laughs> okay. uh, that they came out with. Because a lot of times you'll get sort of the plush and the items that can be just nasty to heat press and leave mm -hmm. marks, but Sanmar launched a fleece blanket that's actually made of their most popular sweatshirt uh, fleece material. Very easy to heat print. Um, and actually, I just heat printed about 50 of them myself mm -hmm. um, a couple weeks back with a screen printed transfer, not CAD cut. Um, but basically, the blanket comes folded. Um, I just threw it in the heat press two layers. I unfolded it sort of halfway. Uh, two layers in the heat press, adjusted my pressure, and slammed down a screen printed transfer in five seconds and made huge profit on it because blankets have a higher perceived value. It's very easy to heat print a corner. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely see if you can sell the corner print and not the middle print. It'll save you some processing time with handling and folding and whatnot. Um, so Tracy uh, featured that as well in her spirit store, which is a great pickup, a great profitable item. So as always, we'd encourage you to submit uh, your concept for Look of the Week. You can do that by emailing TV at Stalls. You can also do that by uploading to Facebook, uh, to the Stall Show and Tell, which happens every Saturday. And last but not least, you can tag us on Instagram at Stalls TV uh, to submit that look of the week. All right. So 
next part of the show, we have been doing a series of eight ways to improve your brand. And I, this is installment number six, right. I think. And this is Courtney K with ways to say thank you. Yes, so let's roll it over to Courtney K for ways to say thank you. Welcome to Building Your Customer Relationship, Ways to Say Thank You. In this part of our eight-part series on ways to improve your brand, we're gonna focus a lot on showing appreciation to your customers. The old proverb states that if you give thanks a little, you'll receive a lot. And so by appreciating your customers and showing them how much you care, you'll be able to take your business far. In this series, we're specifically gonna talk a little bit about ways that you can do that. The first way is gonna be with a handwritten note. We live in a digital world, but your business can really stand out when you actually take the time to handwrite a note to your customer, showing them how thankful you are for their purchases and thanking them and letting them know that you care. And of course, because we live in a digital world, we have to talk a little bit about email as well. And so in addition to handwritten notes, which is a great way to stand out, email is a great automated way to get to your customers on their mobile phones, on their tablets, and right on their computers. There's three different styles of emails that I recommend when you're trying to show customer appreciation to your customers. The first is the standard thank you for your purchase email. Especially if you take orders online, it's great to send a thank you, letting them know that you appreciate their purchase. It doesn't always have to be the invoice order. It could just be an additional email afterwards, thanking them for their purchase, and then also giving them maybe a coupon code or a free gift as a thank you. But you wanna to try to uh, elicit them to get a, a, re um, a repeat order or something like that using that thank you for your purchase email. Secondly would be anniversary emails. So if you have a customer who stayed with you year after year, you wanna to continue to show your appreciation for their loyalty. And so by using an anniversary email, you can certainly do that. Just saying, hey, thanks, here's our one year anniversary or here's our five year anniversary. And the offers that you deliver may be a coupon code for a specific percentage off their order or free shipping or maybe a free gift. All of those things would be dependent on the lifetime of the customer and how long you've been together. And, and obviously, as they continue to grow with you, their uh, anniversary offer would be a little bit better than it was maybe the past year or a few years back. Lastly is happy birthday emails. If you're able to keep track of your customers, not only on their anniversary date, but on their specific birthday email or birth dates, you're able to send birthday emails um, that are dedicated to them, that show that you care, you're thinking about them on their special day. And again, you could use a coupon code or something to drive orders through that as well. After we look at emails, I wanna talk about gifts. So gifts are a great way to show appreciation. I know I personally love when I receive a gift as a thank you from somebody, and so there's no better way to show appreciation than to give a physical gift. One idea would be to do a free gift for bulk orders. So buy 100 t-shirts and get this free gift free, or buy 10 t-shirts and get this gift free. Of course, the gift can vary, but you wanna thank people for ordering bulk items um, and being able to purchase a lot of items from your store. Maybe it's a package or maybe it's multiple products, but delivering a free gift for that. Next would be offering a surprise gift. And so this could vary depending on the size of your customer or the size of their order. A surprise gift for a smaller customer could be something simple with your logo, maybe a pen or a USB drive or a mouse pad. Something that's useful is gonna be the best for your customers and something that's um, beneficial to your target audience. So if you're selling to corporate customers, of course, pens and mouse pads make sense. If you're selling to um, moms and you're selling a lot of children apparel, you may wanna look at a different item for the free gifts that you're delivering to your smaller customers. Now for larger customers, there's a big benefit in standing out in the way that you deliver the products and the free gifts that you give them. This time the free gift may have their logo on an item. That way you're able to give them something that's useful, something that's a little bit more personalized. Um, if you think about some of the events or things that you print for, you may have a large marathon or a large event that happens in your area. You may print for them every year and it's a big revenue stream for you. There's a lot of benefit that going the day after or after the event to the coordinator, giving them maybe an extra gift, maybe a bag of the event or a jacket with their company's logo on it and maybe a latte or donuts and doing that in person. So actually showing up and say, hey, I was thinking about you, wanted to make sure the event ran smoothly, here's a free gift and here's something that lets you know that we care. So those are some great ways to stand out as well. Lastly, another great way would be to hold an appreciation event or an open house at your location. If you have a showroom, 
it's a great way to not only get people into your shop to see maybe new designs or new things in your showroom and sell some product, but also provide some snacks and some food and let them know you appreciate their business and want to welcome them in to kind of get the leg up and see new products in and kind of spend some time with you as well. Whatever way you choose, it's important to decide how you want to appreciate your customers and start implementing this to improve your brand. Thanks for joining me this week. All right, that was pretty good information. It seems like Courtney, one, likes to give gifts, surprise gifts even. Yeah. And two, I've never gotten an invite to her house. So I guess she never really wanted to say thank you to me. I guess. How do you say thank you? Um, I just say it, like call people and say thank you, appreciate it. Send them a text message, call them. It's more personal. Yeah, yeah. In business, though, I think the, the anniversary emails, those sorts of things make it memorable and it cuts through the clutter of all everybody that you're doing business with. Mm -hmm. So I uh, appreciate that installment. We have two more uh, left to go. And in our post-session uh, survey here, for those of you logged in through GoToWebinar, we'd love to hear your feedback on this series. And if you'd like to see uh, more like this that carry episode to episode. Mm -hmm. Now let's get on to our um, core topic uh, for today's episode, which is a heat transfer film. Uh, comparison mm -hmm. or highlight. Um, as you mentioned early, uh, we get a lot of questions on what material is best for what, what are my choices, because a large percentage of our viewing audience does own a vinyl cutter mm -hmm. and can really grow their business by understanding the choices and the options and sort of reducing the confusion of what material should I use or what is available. Yeah, and even if you don't own a vinyl cutter, the information can be useful because you can submit artwork to stalls and have these CAD cut materials sent to you for just heat application. Good, and so we'll start with the, um, the first category of heat transfer films. We've broken these down into six different categories. The first one, uh, is basic looks mm -hmm. and the basic heat transfer films are where uh, folks really can get confused because I have these you know few products all available and what looks like the same finishes the same colors how do I tell the difference mm -hmm. and so the first product we're going to talk about here is CAD cut fashion film which is sort of stalls core heat transfer film that has the largest uh, percentage of growth or adoption and this product gets great reviews um, I categorize this just as a good core lightweight heat transfer film. Mm -hmm. So it uh, is available in basic colors. It feels um, soft on the garment. Most people would say this feels really soft. We happen to have one that's a little softer we'll talk about next. Uh, but this is very easy for any business to process regardless of the cutter type that they have. Yeah, not only will it work with basically any cutter type, it's also, I don't want to say economy price, but more middle of the road because the performance capabilities, it's great for what you would call a basic t-shirt, something with 100% cotton or some type of 50-50, 65-35 blend. Good, and there's not a whole lot of room uh, for error with using this product. Uh, there is a lot of there room There is a error. lot of room for yes. error, yeah. It's a very forgiving product when you use it. So those folks with perhaps that, that consider themselves a novice with cutting, mm -hmm. um, this is a product that can be cut and processed very easily. Uh, it's very forgiving when, when you weed it because it has a sticky backing mm -hmm. so you can reposition stuff back down if you happen to uh, peel it up by accident or not cut it completely accurately. Mm -hmm. um, and it applies effortlessly. It's very quick, fast, easy. So we have a lot of people that love this product, especially uh, when you're just starting out, this is the one I would recommend going for. It's also great for multicolor applications, not the one that we necessarily showed you here today, but it has the ability with that sticky carrier to peel after just a one or two second application for layering of multiple colors. Good, good. So uh, the next product that I would say is closest to this when you start to consider what should I uh, try first is a product called uh, CAD Cut Premium Plus. Now the big difference here, um, it looks like the same basic film, it's same basic <coughs> colors, matte finish. Um, it is slightly softer and more pliable on the garment because mm -hmm. it is designed with uh, stretch capabilities into the material. So naturally you get a softer feel. Mm -hmm. um, you also, when you start to decorate stretchy fabrics, it has a lot of what we call stretch and recovery. Um, so it works well for that. And then uh, the other cool thing about this, it has a different type of adhesive on it. Yeah, it's really what we would classify, although we're putting it in the basic category, it is a performance heat transfer film because it's designed for performance wear and it is designed to stretch, rebound. Um, and it also makes it a little tricky uh, when you get to the cutter. So if you're a beginner, we recommended fashion film to you. You can cut it on pretty much any vinyl cutter. The Premium Plus material, because of its performance uh, characteristics, the film itself is actually thinner and stretchier. 
which is great when it hits the garment, but when you're loaning it into your cutter, it makes it a little bit more difficult to cut. Yeah, we just visited uh, Moose's Enterprises and we're working on that whole blueprint series. And he was like, I can't understand why anybody wouldn't use Premium Plus. This material's great. And the reason why is he was pretty experienced in cutting. He's processed a fair amount of materials. Mm -hmm. And so, and then he had, you know, a Roland uh, cutter or Graph Tech cutter, sort of a higher end uh, servo motor cutter. Mm -hmm. um, and so he could cut this accurately. And uh, while we were there, actually, we were able to solve some um, heat sensitivity issues with pressing garments with the Premium Plus because it can press at 280 degrees. Right, where the fashion film, I don't remember if we said it was 320. Yeah, fashion film's 320. So the, the fact of the matter is, <laughs> everything you can do with fashion film, you can do with Premium Plus. So if you want to only stock one product, mm -hmm. uh, Premium Plus may be the choice, assuming you can process it um, on your cutter. Cut the detail you want to. You need to keep a sharp blade. Uh, but great overall material. Yep. All right, and the next, uh, the third product that we've chose to highlight here is uh, Thermofilm. And so this is, um, I would say, radically different than the other two products. Yeah. Um, it has more of a semi-gloss finish to it. Um, it's also effectively twice the thickness um, of the other products. Yeah, and it is even more, um, the term that Transfer Express uses for their transfer is goof-proof. This is the one mm -hmm. where if you apply too hot, too long, no issues at all with application. It is a very quick application on the heat press. Six, six seconds? Yeah, it's um, six to eight seconds on the heat press. Yeah, six to eight seconds for the thermofilm. And it's also, because of its thickness, it uh, resists abrasion very well. So it's recommended for contact sports. So if you're doing football jerseys, we have it on a hockey jersey here. Thermofilm's the way to go. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing you get when you add the thickness is you get its ability to inhibit the dye migration. So if you have a red polyester like we chose to show you here, mm -hmm. um, any dark color polyester that has a tendency to want to bleed through the lettering, uh, the thermofilm, the white uh, vinyl, is going to stay white. You're not going to get um, the bleed through. now. I don't want to confuse people, but I wouldn't recommend it on a sublimated garment mm -hmm. um, with white because that will bleed, but on a standard polyester, um, you're going to have no issues. So athletic dealers really choose thermofilm as their core material, and I'd say the only reason they change off of that is if they get a heat-sensitive performance fabric and need Premium Plus, or their customers are complaining that, ah, that's kind of thick on a t-shirt, and then they need to go another direction with one of the two uh, aforementioned materials. Right. Okay. So those are the uh, basic heat transfer films. Um, there are more selections, but I would say to sort of cut through the confusion, we have a lot of products in the stalls lineup that customers have uh, grown accustomed to and like and continue to use. But as far as if you're new to the heat transfer film line, we highlight those three. They'll mm -hmm. handle most of your core applications outside of nylon, which we'll talk about at the end. Mm -hmm. All right, the next big category um, for you, if you have a vinyl cutter, is what I would call uh, bling materials and so we have a grouping of a few different materials here that we'd like to highlight for you in bling materials. The first of which is of course the most popular. Um, I don't know when this one will slow down or if it'll slow down but glitter is on fire um, and has been for the past five years. Yeah it hits um, and it's moving past just the cheer market which is really where it kind of took off for mm -hmm. uh, stalls as a company is hitting the cheer market it has definitely moved into fashion and also other areas of spirit wear yeah yeah and even just taking uh, <clears throat> even corporate apparel when it comes to um, the growing number of small businesses that are out there a lot of them are willing to take a jump and a risk and even do a left chest logo out of a glitter flake um, to get it to stand out especially for their female employees mm -hmm. um, the next bling material that we want to cover is hologram and so those are the dancers on this actual piece that are jumping through the <coughs> metallic material there and hologram uh, you get that sort of sparkle or that sheen to um, it is a little more rigid mm -hmm. uh, when you feel it because there's definitely foil in the material as, as well as a binding layer um, that makes it easy to cut uh, weed and apply but hologram we see it um, used almost interchangeably with glitter in most cases, the mm -hmm. glitter flake material in most cases, and used a lot for um, the faux rhinestone uh, sort of look as well. Yes. Okay. And holograms available, not much more to add there, no. at an uh, economy price point. So if you're looking at a low co cost bling option, the hologram's a great choice. I will say it's not as durable as the glitter flake. The products we've showed you before hologram are going to last your 50 mm -hmm. uh, wash and dry cycles at a minimum. Um, hologram, you're looking at more about 20 to 30 um, wash cycles and hang dry application is recommended um, so you don't get the cracking. Um, next is uh, metallics or electric. So the foreground of this 
uh, design here. This has sort of a, a metal plate or prismatic effect on it. We're looking at the silver foreground. Um, I didn't think we were going to hear prismatic today. You didn't think? No. Every once in a while I try something new, a new <laughs> word, and usually I get the same reaction from you. Yep. Um, but the electric material is really popular because it processes just like fashion film, uh, which is the background of this design, so it's easy to cut, easy to layer, and gives you that metallic sheen. So where we have hologram and glitter flake, which are typically a feminine choice, mm -hmm. uh, we have the electric material that gives you a bling or a, a product that jumps out for men's apparel as well. Yeah, and if you're just getting started, as you kind of already mentioned in the special effects, it's very um, significantly more easy to cut and weed because it shares the same properties of fashion film. Yep, and last, some people say that's just not um, foily or metallic-like enough. And not prismatic seeing, enough. Not prismatic enough. Um, so we're seeing it even in athletic apparel where foil is jumping off or high bling results and we have this uh, result here. We have a full class on heat transfer foil and how to use it, but this is actually a adhesive material that's cut on the vinyl cutter and heat mm -hmm. pressed down and then we overlay a sheet of uh, screen printing or heat transfer foil mm -hmm. on top and finish it with the press. Um, you're not going to get more of a that sort of mirror effect than you will with the foil. Yeah, something that's been done in the screen print industry for a very long time, screen printing foil, you see it a lot in retail as well uh, when you're talking about the Victoria's Secret pink of the world. Actually, you can walk through Target or Walmart and find foil on the shelves now too. Yeah, so those are um, four of the top uh, bling-like effects um, that we wanted to highlight for you. And next, uh, I want to go to uh, dimensional. And this, there's only one sample that I um, brought out for this because this has a little bit of dimension and texture to it. Um, this is one that I always think should be selling more. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't think that um, customers or viewers in general show this one enough. It's called CAD Cut Flock. Uh, the real mm -hmm. benefit here is, is it's soft. Okay, so we've matched it here on a fleece. It's not your typical vinyl feel, but we have that sm soft, smooth surface. This is something that's just comfy and you would want to wear. Yeah, the, um, the color selection is interesting. You can get heathered looks with a lot of the flock colors that are out there. So it's very fashion forward, although it also feels very retro right. or vintage, mm -hmm. which is the look that you're finding on the shelves now a lot. So we have thought flock should have taken off a long time ago. You did um, one of the, which, which series was it for? Project Pressets with flock as a base layer to add texture and dimension? Yeah, absolutely. We actually overlaid the uh, adhesive and foil on top to give uh, dimension. So that's our Project Press It series that launches every Thursday mm -hmm. on the Stalls TV blog if you want to keep up on that. But we sort of do out of the box looks where we break the rules. But um, flock is, is, a, is a great product, a fairly good color selection. Um, you do need to uh, process this with a higher angle blade on your vinyl cutter mm -hmm. or just let us cut it for you. Uh, but I'd recommend showing this, especially as we move into fall and winter. Um, it's a nice alternative where you can perhaps command a higher profit over a typical heat transfer film finish on the same garments. For sure. It's, uh, a lot of folks use it also as a replacement for any type of felt if you don't have sewing capability. It gives you that type of finish. Okay. Um, the next category we have is what I'll call tonal. And so we have to get a zoom on this one, but this is actually the uh, Colonial's word mark that you see above the numbering. Uh, this product is called Super Tech Clear Matte. It's actually a clear base material that when you apply it, it just takes on the color of the garment. It almost looks like it's laser etched onto the garment. Mm -hmm. So it tends to show well on mid-tones to darker shades of fabric. Uh, but you can barely feel this one even on there. And we're starting to see this look um, even in our collegiate uniforms for football. Yeah. Um, so there's the matte and then just a but you'll come back in close. There's the gloss on the back. So you can see that gives you more, not like a laser etch, but a wet look. Um, so it's a great option for something that you want understated or to use as a background, even as a design on a t-shirt. Yeah, you can also use it as a cover for fashion film or some other material that you may already have down. And that way you're going to get predictable results with what it's going to look like once applied. Because once you've applied it to a black fashion film or whatever you're going to apply it over top of, that will consistently happen. Yeah, it gives you that high gloss uh, sheen that, that is, is popular right now and trending. Um, the next tonal look that I want to show you is CAD Cut Glaze. Uh, this is actually the blue glaze um, is the dance word mark there. Mm -hmm. And then the silver glaze is the background text. Uh, once again, because it's sort of transparent, you get an extremely soft result. Mm -hmm. um, low temp application on both of these tonal products because they're often used on performance fabrics for that look. 
Uh, but this one's cool. The color actually changes and shifts based on what it's applied to. And this one, for us, I think we were most surprised with the response to the product when we launched it. We're always excited about the new products that we launched. This one came out at the Atlantic City Show back in March, and then we also tied it into uh, one of our live launch events, and it was by far the best selling, got the most interest. So something that people are looking for. Yeah, and I think the trick here is how do you sell it in your business? And so one thing I would recommend is using it as a tonal product, meaning apply the blue on a blue shirt, apply the red on a pink or a red mm -hmm. or a maroon shirt, uh, because then you can just get that tonal effect that's popular right now and you can get a predictable result out of the glaze by leveraging it on light colored garments. Yeah. Like colored garments, not light colored garments. What's next? Okay, next. We have what I would call bright, um, and that's Woo! bright. All right, that so is bright. this is uh, a reflective material, so it's a 3M reflective. Uh, 5807 comes in a roll. Basically, you can cut it and apply it. You can see we have it here on a high vis garment, um, but it returns you know the light source back to the eye, meets all the retro reflectivity standards mm -hmm. for for ANSI for roadside work crews. Um, so a great product can be used in fashion, but workwear, there's a huge opportunity here. There is. It's also a little bit more expensive than a lot of the other materials that you're going to be looking at. So make sure that your customer, one, requires uh, that level of reflectivity mm -hmm. uh, to where it meets all of the standards and just price it a little bit higher. It'll also command more profit for you. Yeah, I think that's a key is more profitable. Um, and mm -hmm. this, uh, we next morning show next week, uh, we're actually going to feature outerwear. Um, this is a great product to use across a variety of um, outerwear garments, vests, um, jackets that we'll see in that episode. Um, another bright effect, this one is glow. This is pretty cool for Halloween too. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is CAD cut glow in the dark. Basically it looks white um, and when the light goes out, which we won't be able to do on set because there's way too many lights in here, <coughs> um, it'll glow lime green. It's always popular in October. We sell it. I think it should be used more often yeah. uh, around the calendar year, but October's when the glow sells. Yeah, and it's a it's a cool product um, just to add a pop to um, a part of a customer logo. So I saw another um, application of this where it was used for like Stellar Planetarium. I've seen it where it's been used for bars and restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, so just a way to add something unique to the garment, especially if it's going to be worn at night. And our last category is what I would call special application. Now, of course, we have glitter flake here, but the background material is what I want you to focus on. This is called Gorilla Grip, uh, Gorilla Grip 2. It has a special nylon adhesive. So if you want to apply to a nylon jacket or you know, even a nylon pop-up tent, um, this has a special adhesive to apply to these um, nylon items that are otherwise very challenging. Uh, to decorate. Right, and it's a great way to get that special effect glitter flake onto a nylon if that's what your customer is looking for. Use that as the base layer. Glitter flake will apply to it as well as most of the other materials that we've showed you today. Yeah, now the, the CAD cut range <coughs> at stalls is a little wider than this. Out in the industry it's a little wider than this, but um, I think this represents sort of the top um, core groups and categories if you were to um, implement some of these products in your business and show show them mm -hmm. sort of like we did in the look of the week where she was um, Tracy was completing a complete look but then adding the glitter flake and the rip away and some of the effects um, you'll start to see customers gravitate to these looks where you're making more profit per piece and ultimately increasing your average sale per customer right right that's all you got for me after that. that's great okay so any questions coming in right now from the viewers Joe yeah, they're uh, very interested on the foil as to how many colors it's available in, uh, in and where on the website do they find that? Okay, so the heat transfer foil, from memory, it's, a, it's about 13 to 16 colors right now and expanding. Uh, you can find that on the website either by just uh, typing in heat transfer foil into the search box or if you go into the CAD Cut Materials uh, section in the top navigation, I think it's on the far left, it's sort of at the very bottom uh, grouping there. There's a link called mm -hmm. heat transfer foil. And then I believe there's also a link on the foil page to get to the CAD cut adhesive that you'll need to complete the application. Correct. And then I would highly recommend if you're interested in the foil, watch that um, hour long video. It's under our broadcast archive on Stalls TV under the live events link. Um, that one's got I think a record amount of views. Um, at this point people are really interested in using mm -hmm. foil. Uh, what's the name of the clear tonal products that you had on? Okay, so Super Tech Clear Matte is going to be the matte finish one, and Super Tech Clear Gloss 
um, would be the gloss finish ones. Those ones are a little tricky because they're typically used for print cut out of a VersaCam, so you can print on those as well. It's sort mm -hmm. of a hybrid product, um, which means they're going to be under the CAD color section of the website. Actually, I have a clear gloss um, here for my left chest multicolor graphic with the Stalls TV logo um, as well. And then on the uh, Gorilla Grip question is, you know, first of all, what what was the material for the nylon? So that was the Gorilla Grip. Gorilla Grip too. In the background. Yep. And then they want to know if they can apply the glitter flake directly on top of the Gorilla Grip at the same temperature. Okay, so same temperature, no. You want to make sure that you reach the uh, application temperature for glitter flake, which from memory is at least 300 degrees for 10 seconds. Um, I can't remember Gorilla Grip too off the top of my head, but um, there's a material combination chart on stalls.com that will help you uh, with those application instructions. Um, generally, uh, this is sort of the, the sketchy ground here, is that um, the product testing lab uh, will not guarantee the glitter flake as a foreground mm -hmm. um, to outlast the life of the garment. However, we have uh, many customers that do it and, and have great success, so we sort of break the rules a little bit sometimes at Stalls TV um, and show you those applications because we know customers have been successful mm -hmm. um, with it. So I would do your own um, testing in that case, but I feel confident saying that um, it'll work, you'll have great results. Okay, and of the products shown, which would you use on an umbrella, and can the flock also work on a fleece blanket? Okay, yeah, the flock on a fleece blanket would be a perfect application. Mm -hmm. um, even on a pillowcase would be a cool application for glow, too, and flock. Yeah. Um, but on umbrellas, depends what, if it's polyester or nylon? Yeah, it depends on if it's polyester or nylon. If it's nylon, you're going to go with the Gorilla Grip 2. Polyester, you could go with pretty much any number of the uh, products that we showed you. The thing to watch on umbrellas or any rainwear is if it has some type of protective coating on it. Right. So we recommend in that application, not only do you test it, but you preheat multiple times to try and burn away any uh, protective coating that may be on there. Yeah, I always like to say outerwear. The cool thing is it's not going to be washed 50 times. Mm -hmm. um, how often do you wash your jackets? Maybe once a season, if that. Um, so you're talking about five, 10 wash products typically. Um, so you have a little bit more forgiveness there and mm -hmm. what you use. And then the final question we have is, is the, was that glitter flake layered directly over the Gorilla Grip or was there a, you know, a cutout for that? We broke the rule, so it was layered directly over the, yes. the Gorilla Grip. Or yeah. else it would have been applied to the nylon and not stick at all, basically. Correct. Um, most of the products that we showed you will actually apply to nylon. They just won't last through the wash cycles. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I bring that up, if you're decorating like a nylon stadium seat or uh, bag, um, any of those sort of niche products, umbrellas that won't be laundered, a lot of times you can even use the polyester adhesion products on nylon if it's not going to be washed and, and get good adhesion. Or picked at. Picked at, yeah, you yeah, like to do that. I do. Like bite stuff and yeah. anyways. All right, so we're, we're digressing here and we're getting the, the cut it off. We're over 30 minutes mark, but we want to thank you for watching the uh, Stalls TV morning show. Uh, next week we will be focused on outerwear and Courtney Kay will be back uh, for that episode um, and then we'll join you again the following week. Thanks for watching.